Hello YouTube, how are you all doing? I'm Danny, back again, and this time we've got another sculpt for you, but we're going back into the world of Call of Duty. And this time we're doing the bunny rabbit that we see in Modern Warfare Zombies. I don't know whether any of you sort of play Modern Warfare, but if you get on there and you play the Zombies mode, you're bound to find this rabbit lying about somewhere. So without further ado, we're going to get into the video, but before we do, hit that like and subscribe button, it really does help me out, it gets me found in the algorithm. Gets the video seen a little bit more, and do you know what? First of all, it's free of charge. So, anyway, let's get into the video. See you in a second. And we're back. Right, gonna get on with the armature. There we go. Chucking down all the metal that we need. Just gonna get all this bent into shape. And before we get any further, I'd just like to make a big apology for the sound. I'm um, having some technical issues with some of my um, equipment. Need to spend a bit of money and get some new upgrades. Alright, anyway, if you can put up with the sound, thank you very much. But as you can see, we're getting on with the armature, we've got him in his general shape, he's going to be sitting down like so, before we move into the tin foil, start stripping pieces off, and wrapping it around his body. Oh, he's fallen over. He's already drunk. But anyway, we're going to start getting all this wraps around him, keep building it up, put several different layers of this on, build it up, build it up until we get to how we like it, doing his legs and his arms as well, get it all out of the way with him one hit, and as you see just building it up, just keep adding extra layers on until we get to the Super Sculpey, which is what we're making this one out of, as most of you know I make most of mine out of cosplay, but run out of cosplay so I haven't to make this one out of Sculpey. But it's not so much of a problem because we haven't got too many flimsy bits on this one that are going to snap off quite easily. So as you can see we've got his body just built up now, we're building up his legs. Now his arms, and we do use quite a lot of clay on this one. If I remember rightly I do about two, two and a half pounds worth of clay. But as you can see there's the basic part of his body done. Going to move on to his head. Just going to whack a bit of tin foil on there to start off with. And get some of that super sculpey on there. Plop, and back on it goes. There we go. Ta da! Looking good. Starting to get that shape together now. Just pushing and pulling, getting, getting that general shape that we want. Right now we've done that, we're going to attach his head to his body by giving him a neck. So we're just slowly building that up, pushing it all in get all that squished in until it looks pretty much like that. Now we're having to extend his face just a little bit to get his nose and his mouth in shape using various tools to help me just squish everything into place. And there you go, I'm now trying to find the mouth and find out where that goes and we're just going to slowly, slowly, slowly just open that up using various different tools again until we get that nice shape of a mouth. As you can see, it's starting to come together. A few more little stabs before then we get into the teeth area. And all I'm doing is just using a ball stylus and I'm just marking out where the teeth are going to go. We've pre baked the teeth in the oven and we're just going to slot them into place. A little bit of faffing about, but we get there in the end. Right, once that's done, you can get his nose on. And all I've done is just a little triangle of clay. We'll put that on, squish it all into place. And again, using various different tools just to get that how we like it and looking like a nose. Right, once we've done that, he's got these pads. And so I've just basically just got a thin strip of clay here. And we're just going to wrap that around and squish one side into his upper arms and then leave that side as it's. You'll see why soon. There we go, now that's all squished in. We're going to do the same to his legs before moving into some of the detail. Now I'm putting some, he's got a load of gashes and scars and bits of stuffing coming out of him all over the place, so that's what I'm just doing now. Just getting some of the scars and rips in place. Right, he's got a heart on him, as he is a nice little softy tufty, uh, tufty bear. 
So we're just going to get the heart in place and that's all stitched on. So as you can see, we're adding all the stitches. Bit precarious, but we have to get all the way around there. I have to do all the way around there and there and around his feet as well. So plenty of stitches going on. But once we've done that little bit there, we're now going to start getting bits of clay in balls to replicate cotton wool coming out of him or his stuffing. Now we're going to add quite a few of these all over the place and then we're just going to put some little indentations in there to try and give it a more of a cotton wool like look. Now he doesn't have eyes, he's got a cross on this one, like a stitched in cross and then the other one he has a button. So we're just going to get them in place. There we go, looking good. I'm just going to poke out some holes for the button before we can get the stitching in close. And there goes the stitching. Again, just using various tools just to help us out here, just get everything pushed into where we need it to go. Go. Right now we've got to move on to his fur. Now I dabbled about with a couple of different tools but I ended up with this one that you can see that I've got in my hand now and all I'm doing is just scratching in a downward motion. You've got to do this all over his body I'm afraid. It took quite a while but in between I was going around with a brush just getting rid of any excess. Just going back into scratching more in to get that fur look. Once we've done that, we put, we're going to just go over with um, some isopropyl alcohol before we put them in the oven. Just give them a good coat of that, getting rid of any fingerprints and any markings that I might have put on him. This is just the first time he's been in the oven. There we go, nice good coating all over him. All right, he's freshly out of the oven as you can see. And as you might see, there's a couple of holes in his head, which I've used that with. Now, that's for the years. So again, we'll just use some armature wire and we're going to put that into place there. Ta-da! There we go. Now, I've just got some of the floral wire and I've wrapped around just to give a little bit of extra support before we wrap it up in clay. A little bit fiddly this, but as you can see, we're finding the general shape, just cutting off the excess. And then we're just going to smoosh it all in until we get something like that. Now for the second one. Right, now that's in place, we've got to get back on and scratch it out the fur. And there we go, that tedious job again. Didn't really enjoy doing this part of it, but it needs to be done. I've only got to do the front side of it because the back side of it is a different sort of material rather than the fur. So again, just scraping off any of the excess with a, with a brush. Right, now we've done that, we can move on to the base and we've got three little cinder blocks that we're going to be using onto a wooden box. Again, if you play the game, you'll know all about the mystery weapon box and that's what I'm replicating here. So, because it is a box, it's made out of wood and basically like planks of wood, so that's what I'm basically doing here, just trying to carve in the planks that go all the way around. Right now, when we've done that, we can move on to this wiry little tool. No idea what they're called. Just make it up as a go along. And we're just going to scratch in to try and get that wood effect. And go all the way around. And again, just brush off any excess. And now, because these are cinder blocks, all I'm going to do with that is just basically stab away until I get loads of different, the right sort of texture that I want. Now onto the top of the box and you can see the question marks are going in place. Uh, all the brackets and the lockers have gone on. There we go, it's all coming together now. All starting to take shape. 
There we go, that's all been stuck together now, it been cooked, and now we can move on to the paint. Various different paints that we use in greys and that for the cinder blocks, browns for the wood. You get the idea. Right now we've gone over with these with black first of all because they are metal and I like to always use black if I'm going to use like a metallic -y metal look afterwards. So now we're moving on to the mouth, the button. Getting all the black out of the way with first. Starting to look creepy now. Now we can move on to the wood. Right, now once we've done him, we're moving on to Mr. Peaks himself. Got a nice blue colour made up for this. So we've done a couple of coats on him. Made sure we've got good coverage before we move on to all of his pads. More of a pinky colour for that. Then we can start moving on to the reds and all the blood. Yeah, very grim. I know, but we're getting there. Loving the look of this one. This has got to be my favourite sculpt I've done so far. What do you think, guys? Let us know in the comments what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you shortly on the next one.